Hey, investor friends, I'm Michelle Markey, and I'm wishing you a happy, healthy, and wealthy Merry Christmas. And today I'll be talking about habits that help people become wealthy and stay wealthy, as well as some of my investing reflections as it looks like we're in a Sandy Claus stock market rally. Some of the wealthy habits I study and emulate happen to come from two of the world's most venerated billionaires, Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, and their followers and anyone who's like them. And Charlie Munger is like a secret Santa in that his knowledge and wisdom is like the gift that keeps on giving. And he likes to say that he's known no wise people who didn't read all the time like Warren Buffett reads all the time and is a learning machine. And very similarly, this habit of reading and learning all the time, as well as surrounding yourself with successful people, is what makes Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett superb role models and wealthy people to follow their example and hopefully become like them. A survey by the University of Chicago a while ago, as cited in the 1936 classic, how to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie shows that the prime interest of people is their health, followed by skills in human relationships. And staying healthy is giving us a chance to thrive personally and financially. And no matter what life challenges are thrown our way, as long as we have our health, we can muster the courage to face any of the challenges. And that's why healthy and wealthy people are always exercising, eating good foods for them, and sleeping at least seven hours a night. Wealthy people we admire are characterized by habits and attributes in humility and gratitude that lead to their generosity. So when wealthy people are humble, it shows that they have an increased value of others because they're secure in themselves and they have a low self-focus. And by practicing gratitude, it shows that they're aware that and acknowledging that they're beneficiaries of someone else's moral action. So it naturally leads them to being more generous because that can show appreciation for others and the desire to wanna to help others. It just so happens that generosity is a habit of the wealthy. And people like Bill Gates and Warren Buffett have pledged to give more than half of their wealth away to charitable causes. And one of Warren Buffett's disciples, Guy Spear, has said every time he says or writes thank you or thank you note, what he gets back is a response of generosity and not one from obligation. So it just goes to show if we want to become wealthy, we should be more giving. I owe my investing approach and mindset to disciples of Munger and Buffett, known as Danielle and Phil Town. And I owe them a lot of gratitude. And in one of their podcast episodes, they talked about a legendary Japanese investor that's like the Warren Buffett of Japan, known as Wahei Takeda, and his concept of Maro, which is short for Magokoro. And it means true heart or sincere heart and many other concepts, including the oneness of humanity in the universe and unconditional love for oneself and others. And among some of the concepts that Danielle and Phil Town zero in on is this concept of gratitude. And Wahe was always thankful even for the troubles he had in his life. And it led him to have enormous success and wisdom. So I'm glad to learn about this concept of gratefulness and the practice of being thankful for everything in our life. So even some of the mistakes I've made in investing, I'm thankful that I experienced that because it's made me a better investor. My investing reflections today include two types of errors and this concept of anti-fragility that Nassim Nicholas Taleb wrote about in his famous book, Anti-Fragile. I totally relate to Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett when they lament about investments they should have made or investments they shouldn't have made. For example, Charlie Munger regrets not investing in more of Bell Ridge Oil shares when he had the chance, 
So that's considered an error of omission when he knew he should have taken action and then didn't. And compared to Warren Buffett investing in Tesco, a supermarket chain, and he regretted that because he acted and he was wrong in that and it may have impaired some of his capital. So that's known as an error of commission. Anti-fragility means a lot of things and it resembles a concept that is beyond robustness and resilience and it thrives with uncertainty and volatility and does better even after adverse random events. And being anti-fragile also means a love of errors. And some of these companies I could think of as possibly being anti-fragile, some of which I believe in investing and others I don't. But you could argue that like the investing community likes to add acronyms to things. I'm gonna call this Chad to summarize some of the things that I may have missed out on from my own errors of omission, but I hope that some of these will continue being anti-fragile companies in the future that are worth investing in. And they include Tesla, Chipotle, Amazon, Apple, and Disney that I'm gonna look at today with you. So looking at uh, Tesla, it looks like I might've missed out on 1,615% gains, judging from when I was first interested in this stock at $200 back in 2016 before the split, or Chipotle where I could have missed out on 477% gains from when I first came in the know about the potential of this company in November of 2017. And I might have missed out on Amazon with over 253% from back in April 2018 or missing out on 363% of gains for Apple. And finally, Disney, where it's roared 227% gains from the bottom of March through recently in mid-December. So with all of these companies, you could think that I made that error of omission. But in my view, based on how the S&P 500 was performing, I didn't think that we went low enough. So some other financial firms had tried to figure out a bottom for the S&P 500, like Credit Suisse guessed that it would be 2250, Goldman Sachs 2000, and Bank of America at 1750 as to where the S&P index might bottom out. And I was hoping that it would bottom out closer to a drawdown of negative 50% so that it would possibly signal that maybe some of the companies I wanted to invest in were more on sale. But that happens to be my error of omission, and I'm just glad I didn't make too many other kinds of errors, the commission kind in recent investing experience. So I'm kind of grateful that although I may have missed out on some of these potentially anti-fragile companies, I'll be on the lookout for them in the future. What I also learned from Phil Town is to look for anti-fragile companies that offer little luxuries to people during tough times. So one of those that I can think of happens to be Costco. And you can tell it's an anti-fragile company because it only dropped 17% in the March 2020 lows and has roared since. So I feel like I definitely missed out on this great company and it's a company whose mission and moat I can believe in and their moat happens to be that they offer quality goods and services at low prices. And this kind of mission with the moat of being able to have low costs and offering quality products and services is probably one of the reasons why Charlie Munger is also one of their board of directors. So that's pretty awesome. But with Costco, I also enjoy some of the little luxuries that I get from there, including this super adorable plushy baby Yoda, which although I don't often buy frivolous things like this, this gives me so much happiness that maybe in the few times a year I might splurge. Spending $20 on this is so much happiness I bought for a very little price. So with this baby Yoda, I wanted to say I really hope that some of what I talked about today is helpful for you and I wish you much joy on your pursuit of worldly wisdom, happiness, and financial freedom. And if you enjoyed this video or learned something, 
please like and subscribe. And if you have questions or comments, I'd love to hear from you. Happy holidays.